Hello and welcome. Today we've got something special for you. So sit down, stick around, and enjoy. Hello and welcome to another Ask Kev Anything, episode 20. Can you believe it? 20 episodes, 20 times I have gone to you, the fans, the people who make this whole thing a reality, and asked you to ask me your questions. So yeah, here it is, the 20th episode. I've asked Kevin anything. So sit down, stick around, and enjoy. Here is our first question from DPSTQ. And he writes, well first he says, AKAs are a real treat. And thanks Kevin. So if you consider AKAs a treat, consider yourself treated. His question is, if you woke up one morning and found out that you were the Prime Minister of Canada, what would your reaction be, and what would be first on the list? Would I be... Yeah, I'd be happy. I think I'd be pretty happy if I woke up as Prime Minister of Canada. I mean, you know, I've done several different jobs, you know, different employments during the years, but never once have I been Prime Minister of a country. That's something that still has eluded me. But uh, I'd probably be pretty excited about it, I would assume. Um, the first thing that I would do... I would definitely get more of the US type junk food imported to Canada. I mean, seriously, you go down to the States, you go down to anywhere, Walmart, convenience store, it doesn't matter where you go, they've got stuff in every imaginable flavor. It's like Debbie, like chocolate pies and shit like that. We don't got that here. That stuff's just shit. Every time I go into a convenience store in the States, or at a Walmart or grocery store, I'd find myself just loading the cart with shit. Shit I shouldn't eat, but still, I want it. Because it's like insanely cool stuff. I mean, and let's just, just get on this topic here. Cereals. I would import more awesome cereals. You guys out there, my friends south of the border, you still have access to Fruity Pebbles, Cocoa Pebbles, Cookie Crisp, whole bunch of stuff we don't have access to anymore, man. Fruity Pebbles and Cocoa Pebbles are the shit. They are the shit, man. The Fruity Pebbles are so fruity. And the Cocoa Pebbles, ah, oh, it just turns your milk to just chocolate love. It's beautiful. We need more of this stuff in Canada. Every time I go there, I get to bring boxes of this stuff back. And don't even get me started on the monster cereals. Down here in Canada, we only got like Count Chocula left. All the other monsters are all gone. I want my blueberry, my frankenberry, even fruity mummy, all that stuff. That's what I want. Oh man, those cereals are awesome. Oh man, that's what I want. Those cereals. And even bigger than that, I want vintage cereals, man. I want Pac-Man cereal. I want C-3PO's. I want that stuff here. And if anybody watching this, you know, there's cereal collectors out there. If you have a box of Pac-Man cereal, not open or C-3PO's, I'm, I'm telling you, you send that to me, I don't care if it's from the 70s, the 80s, I don't care what year it is, you send that to me, I will open the box and eat the cereal on one of my shows. I will do that. That's how dedicated I am. I want to taste the Pac-Man cereal again. I want to taste those C-3PO's again. And, uh, as Prime Minister of Canada, I'd ask General Mills to get back on the bandwagon and make these cereals again. And um, if they don't want to, um, yeah, I mean, I'll just have to resort to the old stuff. You know, I'll just have to open up that box. Hopefully, the cereal's not turned dust yet. Pour some milk on that sucker and just eat it. So, if you've got a box of any of that cereal, you want to see me eat that on a video, let me know. I'll do it. I've eaten no peachy gum from wax packs from the 70s just because I wanted that 70s feel. 
the 70s taste. So uh, I'll do the same for cereal. Next question is from Sonic the Voice Fan, and he writes, Hey Decompose, what did you think of the idea of wanting to write Spider-Man? Are you thinking about pursuing it with a passion, or do you just treat it like an idea to simply imagine yourself doing one day? And what do you think... Okay, well, that's the first part of the question. So what do I think about writing Spider-Man? Is it something that I want to pursue and all that kind of stuff? Of course, I would love to write Spider-Man, but let's face it, I really don't think that anybody at Marvel is going to say, hey, that guy, Decompose, who does all the reviews and all that nostalgic stuff, yeah, let's uh, give him a chance to write Spider-Man. Um, what I do plan on doing, though, is actually, I, I write short stories uh, fairly often. I sit down and I write stuff. Uh, more for in, more for intense, more mature reader type stuff, but I write stuff and um, you know, I might actually be looking soon to find a artist out there, an artist uh, online who could actually draw the story and I'd write the story and then uh, put that together and have the first ever official decompose comic and uh, put that online and see what the people think. So if you're an artist anybody out there and you would like to maybe have some of your stuff seen and by you know I don't know I get a few thousand subscribers hopefully they'll read it or look at it so you know it's a few thousand views anyway of your uh, of your art all in uh, enveloped in a story mystery of decompose please feel free to uh, drop me a line send me an email uh, or just post a video with uh, shots of uh, some of your drawings some of your stuff some of your material portfolio so uh, so I can see it I never know maybe somebody like Marvel DC image might actually pick it up men can dream and the second part of his question was what do you think of Joe Quisada to be honest I like Amazing 591 but I but I don't like the issues after in fact some of these stories seem they could be told without the whole brand new day of retcon do you think a continuity should be sacrificed to bring in new villains and J. Jonah Jameson be mayor of New York City, etc.? Um, what do you think of Quesada? I, I've been pretty open about what I thought about what he's done in the past. Uh, you know, I'm not going to cover all that up. Uh, you've all seen the video, so you know pretty much what I think. Although, um, did he have to sacrifice continuity to do what he did? No, not really. But as I can understand it, I mean, from a more of a business perspective on it, more than a fanboy, I can understand why he would sacrifice continuity in order to try to draw in new readers, knowing that most of the old readers would still stick with it to see what would happen, and then drawing these new readers by basically promoting it as a whole brand new type Spider-Man, and then bringing kind of these drastic changes now that are, you know, that actually make the story a little more interesting. So I kind of understand what he did, why he did it. Uh, the fanboy in me doesn't necessarily like it, but from a business perspective, I guess it kind of made sense. And he was able to draw the storylines a lot quicker through the year with the comic actually going to the only Spider-Man comic out there other than Ultimate. So by canceling the other titles and making it come out three times a month, he could basically take two years of storyline and bring it out, you know, in about six, seven months. So that basically could explain the whole continuity, the whole retcon and everything, and uh, do that in about a year. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that although I'm not a fan of what happened, um, after all of this, all of this other stuff that's been going on for the last year of this whole amazing Spider-Man brand new day thing, at least finally we're starting to see some payoffs. Um, as for the villains being introduced, I'm still not a fan of any of these new villains that have been introduced. I still find them all weak. Who knows, maybe eventually they'll grow on me, but I highly doubt it. The only villain out of all of the whole retcon that I don't mind is Annie Venom. And let's face it, the only reason why I don't mind Annie Venom is because I like Venom. If it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for the fact that it was Eddie Brock in a symbiote again, I probably wouldn't like any Venom either. So, um, yeah, so basically the only thing cool, uh, villain-wise, that's come out thus far, is because they took a spin on an old villain. It has nothing to do with any of these new villains coming out. So that's what I think about that. 
Next question is from John Rizzo, and he asks, I got a couple of questions in regards to the reissue of Megatron. Why wouldn't sellers outside of the US ship the figure over here? Also, was wondering if there were any cheaper versions of the G1 Transformer action figures. With the new movie coming out, it's re-sparked my interest. Good, that's always good. I mainly collect comics, but thinking about getting into collecting action figures as well. Thanks for any suggestions. Take care. The reason why Megatron cannot be shipped outside or inside the US um, is that, well, the reason why people outside the US won't ship them inside the US or the stores you might have gone to, such as uh, Automaton Toys or, or stores like that, is because they're not modified. Uh, the issue is a lot of people are, well actually not a lot of people, some people are passing these toys as real guns. And the United States has a law that prohibits the sale of a gun, a replica toy gun, that looks like a real gun. And if you do sell one, it has to be basically orange capped on the barrel in order to make it, you know, look like your toy gun. Uh, some of these shipments that are coming in actually from Japan where there's no law, they come in just normal gun, normal Megatron, no altercations at all and then people or some toy stores will go in or some people in Japan selling them will actually go in and put the plugs in them put the orange plugs in them or whatnot in order to make them look as if they're actually toy guns and not real weapons uh, that's the reason why you're not really able to get one um, outside of the US that easy especially if they're not plugged uh, they're not going to ship there because it's actually against the law there's a law for it uh, you can go online and read up on it it does exist um, the thing about uh, Megatron too, I don't know if you read this, but recently there was a, and lo and behold it has to be a Canadian like me, a, who actually uh, did this, but uh, was actually brandishing a Megatron toy at some kind of altercation. The police got involved and thought it was a real weapon, and it was, lo and behold, the Megatron toy. So, uh, kind of just shows you that yes there can be mistaken identity and people believing the toy is actually a real gun because it does resemble pretty closely to a real gun might be a little smaller masterpiece is a little bigger um the black megatron 2 has a brown handle and everything so i mean that's pretty much the reason why uh, there's a law against uh, actually selling the toy unless it is modified and some people don't want to modify it because if you modify it, you gotta open it, it's not sealed anymore, yada yada yada. So uh, yeah, if you want a Megatron toy, um, you're probably gonna have to get a modified one. Because it's hard to get one that is unmodified within the US. Hope that explains uh, a little bit, or helps you out at least. I always thought they had good deals on Amazon. Anyways. Next question is from Shane Curtis, and he says, Do you think Wolverine can die? If so, who do you think could kill him? I need to prove to my friend and teacher he can die. Well, Shane, it's not really hard to prove that Wolverine can die. Everybody can die. That's simple. And in the Marvel Universe, anybody can come back from dead, too. So... Answer the question is, yeah, he can die. Who can kill him? Uh, anybody who can basically cut off his head. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, another way he can die, actually, is old age. Even though he grows old very slowly, he's still growing old. So eventually, old man Logan is going to kick the, kick the bucket. Because that animanium ain't no fountain of youth. And the last question is from Mickey Oriole, and he writes, For the Ultimate Marvel Universe, is Ultimatum the ending? Well, in the Marvel Universe, nothing really is the ending of anything. As we all know, people come back from the dead pretty regularly, and continuities and characters are brought back. But, for the sake of argument and for the sake of the comic book series and whatnot, for what we know and what we see, Ultimatum will be the end of the Ultimate Universe. And with that is also the end of this Ask Kev Anything. So until next time guys, later.